The Enuma Elish, the Sumerian Epic of Creation The First Tablet When in the height heaven was not named, and the earth beneath did not yet bear a name, and the primeval Apsu, who begat them, and Chaos, Tiamat, the mother of them both, their waters were mingled together, and no field was formed, no marsh was to be seen. One of the gods none had been called into being, and none bore a name, and no destinies were ordained. Then were created the gods in the midst of heaven. Lahamu and Lahamu were called into being. Ages increased. Then Ansar and Kisar were created, and over them, long were the days, then came forth, Anu their son, Ansar and Anu, and the god Anu. Nudimud, whom his fathers, his begetters, abounding in all wisdom, he was exceedingly strong, he had no rival, thus were established and were the great gods. But Tiamat and Absu were still in confusion, they were troubled and in disorder. Apru was not diminished in might, and Tiamat roared. She smote and their deeds, their way was evil. Then Apsu, the begetter of the great gods, cried unto Mumu, his minister, and said unto him, O Mumu, thou minister that rejoicest my spirit, come unto Tiamat, let us go. So they went, and before Tiamat they laid down. They consulted on a plan with regard to the gods, their sons. Apsu opened his mouth and spake, and unto Tiamat, the glistening one, he addressed the word, Lacuna, their way, Lacuna. By day I cannot rest, by night I cannot lay down in peace, but I will destroy their way, I will, Lacuna. Let there be lamentation, and let us lie down again in peace. When Tiamat heard these words, she raged and cried aloud. She, Lacuna, grievously, Lacuna. She uttered a curse, and unto Absu she spake, What then shall we do? Let their way be made difficult, and let us lie down again in peace. Mumu answered, and gave counsel to Absu, Lacuna, and hostile to the gods was the counsel Mumu gave. Come, their way is strong, but thou shalt destroy it. Then by day shalt thou have rest, by night shalt thou lie down in peace. Absu hearkened unto him, his countenance grew bright. Since Mumu planned evil against the gods, his sons, Lacuna, he was afraid, Lacuna. His knees became weak, they gave way beneath him. Because of the evil which their firstborn had planned, Lacuna. There, Lacuna, they altered. Lacuna, they, Lacuna. Lamentation, they sat in sorrow. Lacuna. Then Ea, who knoweth all that is, went up and he beheld their muttering. A Lacuna of about thirty illegible lines. He spake, Lacuna, thy, he hath conquered, and Lacuna. He weepeth and sitteth in tribulation, Lacuna, of fear, Lacuna. We shall not lie down in peace, Lacuna. Absu is laid waste, Lacuna, and Mumu, who was taken captive, in Lacuna. Thou didst, Lacuna. Let us lie down in peace, Lacuna. They will smite, Lacuna. Let us lie down in peace, Lacuna. Thou shalt take vengeance for them, Lacuna. Unto the tempest shalt thou, Lacuna. And Tiamat hearkened unto the word of the bright god, and said, Shalt thou entrust, let us wage war, Lacuna. The gods in the midst of, Lacuna, for the gods did she create. They banded themselves together, and at the side of Tiamat they advanced. They were furious, they devised mischief without resting night and day. They prepared for battle, fuming and raging. They joined their forces and made war. Tiamat, who formed all things, made in addition weapons invincible. She spawned monster serpents, sharp of tooth, merciless of fang, with poison instead of blood, she filled their bodies. Fierce monster vipers, she clothed with terror. With splendor she decked them. She made them of lofty stature. Whoever beheld them, terror overcame him. Their bodies reared up, and none could withstand their attack. She set up vipers and dragons, and the monster Lahamu, and hurricanes, and raging hounds, and scorpion men, and mighty tempests, and fishmen, and rams. They bore cruel weapons, without fear of the fight. Her commands were mighty, none could resist them. 
After this fashion, huge of stature, she made eleven kinds of monsters. Among the gods who were her sons, inasmuch as he had given her support, she exalted Kingu, in the midst she raised him to power, to march before the forces, to lead the host, to give the battle signal, to advance the attack, to direct the battle, to control the fight. Unto him she entrusted, in costly raiment she made him sit, saying, I have uttered thy spell, in the assembly of the gods I have raised thee to power, the dominion over all the gods I have entrusted to him. Be thou exalted, thou my chosen spouse. May they magnify thy name over all of them, the Anunnaki. She gave the tablets of destiny, on his breast she laid them, saying, Thy command shall not be without avail, and the word of thy mouth shall be established. Now Kingu, thus exalted, having received the power of Anu, decreed the fate amongst the gods, his sons, saying, Let the opening of your mouth quench the fire god. Whoso is exalted in the battle, let him display his might. The Second Tablet Tiamat made weighty her handiwork. Evil she wrought against the gods, her children. To avenge Absu, Tiamat planned evil. But how she had collected her forces, the god unto Ea divulged. Ea hearkened to this thing, and he was grievously afflicted, and he sat in sorrow. The days went by, and his anger was appeased, and to the place of Ansar his father he took his way. He went, and, standing before Ansar, the father who begat him, all that Tiamat had plotted he repeated unto him, saying, Tiamat our mother hath conceived a hatred for us, with all her force she rageth, full of wrath. All of the gods have turned to her, with those whom ye created have go at her side. They are banded together, and at the side of Tiamat they advance. They are furious, they despise mischief without resting night and day. They prepare for battle, fuming and raging. They have joined their forces and are making war. Amu Huba, who formed all things, hath made in addition weapons invincible. She has spawned monster serpents, sharp of tooth and merciless of fang. With poison instead of blood, she hath filled their bodies. Fierce monster vipers she hath clothed with terror. With splendour she hath decked them. She hath made them of lofty stature. Whoever beholdeth them is overcome by terror. Their bodies rear up, and none can withstand their attack. She hath set up vipers and dragons, and the monster Lahamu, and hurricanes and the raging hounds, and scorpion men and mighty tempests, and fish men and rams. They bear cruel weapons without fear of the fight. Her commands are mighty, none can resist them. After this fashion, huge of stature, she hath made eleven monsters. Among the gods who are her sons, inasmuch as he hath given her support, she hath exalted Kingu, in their midst she has raised him to power, to march before the forces, to lead the host, to give the battle signal, to advance to the attack, to direct the battle, to control the fight. Unto him hath she entrusted, in costly raiment she has made him sit, saving, I have uttered thy spell, in the assembly of the gods I have raised thee to power, the dominion over all the gods I have entrusted unto thee. Be thou exalted, thou my chosen spouse. May they magnify thy name over all of them. She hath given him the tablets of destiny. On his breast she has laid them, saying, Thy command shall not be without avail, and the mouth of thy word shall be established. Now Kingu, thus exalted, having received the power of Anu, decreed the fate for the gods, her sons, saying, Let the opening of your mouth quench the fire god. Whoso is exalted in the battle, let him display his might. When Ansar heard how Tiamat was mightily in revolt, he bit his lips, his mind was not at peace, Lacuna. He made a bitter lamentation, Lacuna. Battle, Lacuna. Thou, Lacuna. Mamu and Aspu, thou hast smitten. But Tiamat hath exalted Kingu, and where is one who can oppose her? Lacuna. Deliberation, Lacuna. The Lacuna. Of the gods. Nudimud. 
a lacuna of about a dozen lines occurs here. Ansar unto his son address the word. Lacuna, my mighty hero, whose strength is great and whose onslaughts cannot be withstood, go and stand before Tiamat, that her spirit may be appeased, that her heart may be merciful. But if she will not hearken to thy word, our word thou shalt speak unto her, that she may be pacified. But he heard the word of his father Ansar, and he directed his path to her, toward her he took the way. Anne drew nigh, he beheld the muttering of Tiamat, but he could not withstand her, and turned back, Lacuna, Ansar Lacuna. He spake to him, a gap of over twenty lines occurs here, an avenger, Lacuna, valiant, Lacuna, in the place of his decision, Lacuna, he spake unto him, Lacuna, thy father, Thou art my son, who maketh merciful his heart, Lacuna. To the battle shalt thou draw nigh. He that shall behold thee shall have peace. And the Lord rejoiced at the word of his father, and he drew nigh and stood before Ansar. Ansar beheld him, and his heart was filled with joy. He kissed him on the lips, and his fear departed from him. O my father, let not the word of thy lips be overcome. Let me go, that I may accomplish all that is in thy heart. O Ansar, let not the word of thy lips be overcome. Let me go, that I may accomplish all that is in thy heart. What man is it, who hath brought thee forth to battle? Lacuna. Tiamat, who is a woman, is armed and attacketh thee. Lacuna. Rejoice and be glad. The neck of Tiamat shalt thou swiftly trample under foot. Lacuna. Rejoice and be glad. The neck of Tiamat shalt thou swiftly trample under foot. O my son, who knoweth all wisdom, pacify Tiamat with thy pure incantation. Speedily set out upon thy way, for thy blood shall not be poured out, thou shalt return again. The Lord rejoiced at the word of his father, his heart exalted, and unto his father he spake, O Lord of the gods, destiny of the great gods, if I your avenger, Conquer Tiamat and give you life. Appoint an assembly, and make my fate preeminent and proclaim it. In Upsu Kenaku, seat yourself joyfully together. With my word in place of you I will decree fate. May whatsoever I do remain unaltered. May the word of my lips never be chanced nor made of no avail. The Third Tablet Ansar opened his mouth, and unto Gaga, his minister spake the word, O Gaga, thou minister that rejoicest my spirit, unto Lamu and Lahamu I will send thee, Lacuna. Thou canst attain, Lacuna. Thou shalt cause to be brought before thee, Lacuna. Let the gods, all of them, make ready for a feast, and at a banquet let them sit. Let them eat bread, let them mix wine, that for Marduk, their avenger, they may decree the fate. Go, Gaga, stand before them, and all that I tell thee repeat unto them, and say, Ansar, your son, hath sent me. The purpose of his heart he hath made known unto me. He saith that Tiamat our mother has conceived a hatred for us. With all her force she rageth, full of wrath. All the gods have turned to her. With those whom ye created they go at her side. They are banded together, at the side of Tiamat they advance. They are furious, they devise mischief without resting day and night. They prepare for battle, fuming and raging. They have joined their forces and are making war. Muhaba, who formed all things, hath made in addition weapons invincible. She has spawned monster serpents, sharp of tooth and merciless of fang. With poison instead of blood she hath filled their bodies. Fierce monster vipers, she hath clothed them with terror. With splendour she hath decked them. She hath made them of lofty stature. Whoever beholdeth them, terror overcometh him. Their bodies rear up, and none can withstand their attack. She hath set up vipers, and dragons, and the monster Lahamu, and hurricanes, and raging bounds, and scorpion men, and mighty tempests, and fishmen, and rams. They bear merciless weapons without fear of the fight. Her commands are mighty, none can resist them. After this fashion, huge of stature, she hath made eleven monsters. Among the gods who are her sons 
inasmuch as he hath given her support, she hath exalted Kingu, in their midst she has raised him to power, to march before the forces, to lead the host, to give the battle signal, to advance to the attack, to direct the battle, to control the fight. Unto him hath she entrusted, in costly raiment she hath made him sit, saying, I have uttered thy spell, in the assembly of the gods I have raised thee to power, the dominion over all the gods I have entrusted to thee. Be thou exalted, thou my chosen spouse. May they magnify their name over all of them, over the Anunnaki. She hath given him the tablets of destiny, on his breast she laid them, saying, Thy command shall be not without avail, and the word of thy mouth shall be established. Now Kingu, thus exalted, having received the power of Anu, decreed the fate for the gods, her sons, saying, Let the opening of your mouth quench the fire god. Whoso is exalted in the battle, let him display his might. I sent Anu, but he could not withstand her. Nudimud was afraid and turned back, but Marduk has set out, the director of the gods, your son, to set out against Tiamat, his heart hath prompted him. He opened his mouth and spake unto me, If I, your avenger, conquer Tiamat and give you life, appoint an assembly, make my fate preeminent and proclaim it. In Upsukanaku, seat yourself joyfully together. With my word in place of you, I will decree fate. May whatsoever I do remain unaltered. May the words of my lips never be changed nor have made of no avail. Hasten, therefore, and swiftly decree for him the fate which you bestow, that he may go and fight your strong enemy. Gaga went. He took his way, and humbly before Lamu and Lahamu, the gods his fathers, he made obeisance, and kissed the ground at their feet. He humbled himself, then he stood up and spake unto them, saying, Ansar your son hath sent me. The purpose of his heart he has made known to me. He saith that Tiamat our mother has conceived a hatred for us. With all her force she raged, full of wrath. All the gods have turned to her. With those whom ye created, they go at her side. They are banded together, and at the side of Tiamat they advance. They are furious. They devise mischief without resting, night and day. They prepare for battle, fuming and raging. They have joined their forces, and are making war. Tiamat, who formed all things, hath made in addition weapons invincible. She hath spawned monster serpents, sharp of tooth and merciless of fang, with poison instead of blood she hath filled their bodies. Fierce monster vipers she hath clothed with terror, with splendour she hath decked them, she hath made them of lofty stature. Whoever beholdeth them, terror overcometh him. Their bodies rear up, and none can withstand their attack. She hath set up vipers and dragons, and the monster Lahamu, and hurricanes and raging hounds and scorpion men, and mighty tempests and fishmen and rams. They bear merciless weapons, without fear of the fight. Her commands are mighty, none can resist them. After this fashion, huge of stature, hath she made eleven monsters. Among the gods who are her sons, inasmuch as he hath given her support, she hath exalted Kingu, in the midst she hath raised him to power, to march before the forces, to lead the host, to give the battle signal, to advance the attack, to direct the battle, to control the fight. Unto him she hath entrusted, in costly raiment she hath made him sit, saying, I have uttered thy spell, in the assembly of the gods, I have raised thee to power. The dominion over all the gods I have entrusted unto thee. Be thou exalted, thou my chosen spouse. May they magnify thy name over all of them, the Anunnaki. She hath given him the tablets of destiny, on his breast she laid them, saying, Thy command shall not be without avail, and the word of thy mouth shall be established. Now Kingu, thus exalted, having received the power of Anu, decreed the fate of the gods, her sons, saying, Let the opening of your mouth quench the fire god. Who also is exalted in the battle, let him display his might. I sent Anu, but could not withstand her. Nudimud was afraid and turned back, but Marduk hath set out, the director of the gods, your son. To set out against Tiamat his heart hath prompted him. He opened his mouth and spake unto me, saying, If I, your avenger, conquer Tiamat and give you life, 
appoint an assembly, make my fate preeminent, and proclaim it. In Upsukanaku, seat yourselves joyfully together. With my word in place of you, I will decree fate. May whatsoever I do remain unaltered. May the word of my lips never be changed nor made of no avail. Hasten, therefore, and swiftly decree for him the fate which you bestow, that he may go and fight your strong enemy. Lamu and Lahamu heard and cried aloud. All of the Igigi, the elder gods, wailed bitterly, saying, What has been altered, so that they should? We do not understand the deed of Tiamat. Then did they collect and go, the great gods, all of them, who decree fate. They entered in before Ansar, they filled Lacuna. They kissed one another in the assembly, Lacuna. They made ready for the feast, and at the banquet they sat. They ate bread and mixed sesame wine. The sweet drink, the mead, confused their Lacuna. They were drunk with drinking. Their bodies were filled. They were wholly at their ease. Their spirit was exalted. Then for Marduk, their avenger, did they decree the fate. The fourth tablet. They prepared for him a lordly chamber. Before his fathers as prince he took their place. Thou art chiefest amongst the great gods. Thy fate is unequalled. Thy word is Anu. O Marduk, thou art chiefest amongst the great gods. Thy fate is unequalled. Thy word is Anu. Henceforth not without avail shall be thy command. In thy power shall it be to exalt and abase. Established shall be the word of thy mouth. Irresistible shall be thy command. None among the gods shall transgress thy boundary. Abundance, the desire of the shrine of the gods, should be established in thy sanctuary, even though they lack offerings. O Marduk, thou art our avenger. We give thee sovereignty over the whole world. Sit thou down in might. Be exalted in thy command. Thy weapon shall never lose its power. It shall crush thy foe. O Lord, spare the life of him that putteth his trust in thee. But as for the God who began the rebellion, pour out his life. Then set they in their midst a garment, and unto Marduk, their firstborn, they spake, May thy fate, O Lord, be supreme among the gods, to destroy and to create. Speak thou the word, and thy command shall be fulfilled. Command now, and let the garment vanish, and speak the word again, and let the garment reappear. Then he spake with his mouth, and the garment vanished. Again he commanded it, and the garment reappeared. When the gods his fathers beheld the fulfilment of his word, they rejoiced and they did homage to him, saying, Marduk is king. They bestowed upon him the scepter, and the throne, and the ring. They give him an invincible weaponry, which overwhelmeth the foe. Go and cut off the life of Tiamat, and let the wind carry her blood into secret places. After the gods his fathers had decreed for the Lord his fate, they caused him to set out on a path of prosperity and success. He made ready the bow, he chose his weapon, he slung a spear upon him and fastened it, he raised the club, in his right hand he grasped it, the bow and the quiver he hung at his side. He set the lightning in front of him, with burning flame he filled his body. He made a net to enclose the inward parts of Tiamat. The four winds he stationed so that nothing of her might escape. The south wind and the north wind and the east wind and the west wind he brought near to the net, the gift of his father Anu. He created the evil wind and the tempest and the hurricane and the fourfold wind and the sevenfold wind and the wind which has no equal he sent forth the winds which he had created, the seven of them, to disturb the inward parts of Tiamat, and they followed after him. Then the Lord raised the thunderbolt, his mighty weapon. He mounted the chariot, the storm unequalled for terror. He harnessed and yoked it to four horses, destructive, ferocious, overwhelming, and swift of pace. Lacuna. Were their teeth. They were flecked with foam. They were skilled in Lacuna. They had been trained to trample underfoot. Lacuna, mighty in battle, left and right, Lacuna. His garment was Lacuna. He was clothed with terror, 
With overpowering brightness his head was crowned. Then he set out, he took his way, and towards the raging Tiamat he set his face. On his lips he held Lacuna. He grasped in his hand, and they beheld him, the gods beheld him, the gods his fathers beheld him, the gods beheld him. And the Lord drew nigh, he gazed upon the inward parts of Tiamat, he perceived the muttering of Kingu, her spouse. As Marduk gazed, Kingu was troubled in his gait. His will was destroyed, and his motion ceased. And the gods, his helpers, who marched by his side, beheld their leaders, Lacuna. And their sight was troubled, but Tiamat, Lacuna. She turned not her neck. With lips that failed not, she uttered rebellious words, Lacuna. Thy coming as lord of the gods, from their places they have gathered, in thy place are they. Then the lord raised the thunderbolt, his mighty weapon, and against Tiamat who was raging, thus he sent the word, Thou art become great, thou hast exalted thyself on high, and thy heart hath prompted thee to call to battle, Lacuna, their fathers, Lacuna, there thou hatest, Lacuna. Thou hast exalted Kingdu to be thy spouse. Thou hast Lacuna, him, that, even as Anu, he should issue decrees. Thou hast followed after evil, and against the gods my fathers thou hast contrived thy wicked plan. Let then thy host be equipped. Let thy weapons be girded on. Stand, I and thou, let us join battle. When Tiamat heard these words, she was like one possessed. She lost her reason. Tiamat uttered wild, piercing cries. She trembled and shook to her very foundations. She recited an incantation. She pronounced her spell. And the gods of the battle cried out for their weapons. Then advanced Tiamat and Marduk, the counsellor of the gods. To the fight they came on. To the battle they drew nigh. The lord spread out his net and caught her. And the evil wind that was behind him he let loose in her face. As Tiamat opened her mouth to its full extent, he drove in the evil wind. While as yet she had not shut her lips, the terrible winds filled her belly, and her courage was taken from her, and her mouth she opened wide. He seized the spear and burst her belly. He severed her inward parts. He pierced her heart. He overcame her and cut off her life. He cast down her body and stood upon it. When he had slain Tiamat, the leader, her might was broken, her host was scattered, and the gods her helpers, who marched by her side, trembled and were afraid, and turned back. They took to flight to save their lives, but they were surrounded so that they could not escape. He took them captive, and he broke their weapons. In the net they were caught, and in the snare they sat down. They, Lacuna, of the world they filled with cries of grief. They received punishment from him. They were held in bondage, and on the eleven creatures which she had filled with the power of striking terror, upon the troops of devils who marched at her lacuna, he brought affliction, their strength he lacuna, them and their opposition he trampled under his feet. Moreover, Kingu, who had been exalted over them, he conquered, and with the god Dug-Gar he counted him. He took from him the tablets of destiny that were not rightly his. He sealed them with a seal, and in his own breast he laid them. Now after the hero Marduk had conquered, and cast down his enemies, and had made the arrogant foe even, and had fully established Ansar's triumph over the enemy, and had attained the purpose of Nudimud, over the captive gods, he strengthened his Durance, and into Tiamat, whom he had conquered, he returned. And the Lord stood upon Tiamat's hinder parts, and with his merciless club, he smashed her skull, he cut through the channels of her blood, and he made the north wind bear it away into secret places. His fathers beheld, and they rejoiced and were glad. Presents and gifts they brought unto him. Then the Lord rested, gazing upon her dead body, while he divided the flesh of the lacuna, and devised a cunning plan. He split her up like a flat fish into two halves. One half of her he established as a covering for heaven. He fixed a bolt, he stationed a watchman, and bade them not to let her waters come forth. He passed through the heavens, 
he surveyed the regions thereof, and over against the deep he set the dwelling of Nadimud, and the Lord measured the structure of the deep, and he founded e Sarah, a mansion like unto it. The mansion e Sarah, which he created as heaven, he caused Anu, Bel, and Ea in their districts to inhabit. The Fifth Tablet Marduk made the stations for the great gods, the stars their images, as the stars of the zodiac he fixed. He ordained the year and intersections he divided it. For the twelve months he fixed three stars, and after he had Lacuna, the days of the year Lacuna, images. He founded the station of Nibir, the planet Jupiter, to determine their bounds, that none might erg or go astray. He set the station of Bel and Ea along with him. He opened the great gates on both sides. He made strong the bolt on the left and on the right. In the midst thereof he fixed the zenith. The moon god he caused to shine forth, and the night he entrusted to him. He appointed him, a being of the night, to determine the days. Every month without ceasing, with the crown he covered him, saying, At the beginning of the month, when thou shinest upon the land, thou commandest the horns to determine six days, and on the seventh day to divide the crown. On the fourteenth day thou shalt stand opposite the half Lacuna. When the sun god on the foundation of heaven, Lacuna, thee shalt cause to Lacuna, and thou shalt make his Lacuna, unto the path of the sun god thou shalt cause to draw nigh, and on the Lacuna day thou shalt stand opposite, and the sun god shall Lacuna to traverse her way, Lacuna, thou shalt cause to draw nigh, and thou shalt judge the right, Lacuna, to destroy Lacuna. Nearly fifty lines here are lost. The gods, his fathers, beheld the net which he had made. They beheld the bow and how its work was accomplished. They praised the work which he had done. Then Anu raised the Lacuna in the assembly of the gods. He kissed the bow, saying, It is. And thus he named the names of the bow, saying, Longwood shall be the name, and the second name shall be Lacuna, and its third name shall be Bowstar, and in heaven shall it Lacuna. He then fixed a station for it, Lacuna. Now after the fate of Lacuna, he set a throne, Lacuna, in heaven. The remainder of this tablet is missing. The Sixth Tablet When Marduk heard the word of the gods, his heart prompted him, and he devised a cunning plan. He opened his mouth, and unto Ea he spake. That which he had conceived in his heart, he imparted unto him. My blood will I take, and bone will I fashion. I will make man, that man may lacuna. I will create man who shall inhabit the earth, that the service of the gods may be established, that their shrines may be built. But I will alter the ways of the gods, and I will change their paths, Together they shall be oppressed, and unto evil they shall lacuna. And Ea answered him, and spake the word, lacuna, the lacuna, of the gods I have changed, lacuna, and one lacuna, shall be destroyed, and men will I lacuna, and the gods lacuna, and they. The rest of this text is wanting, with the exception of the last few lines of the tablet, which read as follows. They rejoiced. In Upsu Kenaku they set their dwelling. Of the heroic son, their avenger, they cried, We whom he succoured. They seated themselves, and in the assembly they named him. They cried aloud, they exalted him. The Seventh Tablet O Marduk, bestower of planting, founder of sowing, creator of grains and plants, who caused the green herb to spring up, O Marduk, who is revered in the house of council, who is abundant in counsel. The gods paid homage, fear took upon them. O Marduk, the mighty one, the light of the father who begat him, who directeth the decrees of Anu, Bel, and Ea, he was their patron, be ordained their lacuna. He whose provision is abundance, goeth forth lacuna. Marduk is he who created them anew. Should their wants be pure, then they are satisfied. Should he make an incantation, then the gods are appeased. Should they attack him in anger, he withstandeth their onslaught. Let him therefore be exalted, and in the assembly of the gods let him lacuna. 
None among the gods can rival him. Marduk is Zi Ukina, the life of the host of the gods, who established for the gods the bright heavens. He set them on their way and adorned their path. Never shall his lacuna deeds be forgotten among men. Marduk, a Zi Azag, thirdly they named the bringer of purification, the god of the favoring breeze, the lord of hearing and mercy, the creator of fullness and abundance, the founder of plenteousness, who increaseth all that is small. In sore distress we have felt this favoring breeze. Let them say, let them pay reverence, let them bow in humility before him. Marduk, as Agar Azag, may mankind fourthly magnify. The Lord of the pure incantation, the quickener of the dead, who had mercy upon the captive gods, who removed the yoke from upon the gods his enemies, for their forgiveness did he create mankind, the merciful one, with whom it is to bestow life. May his deeds endure, may they never be forgotten, in the mouth of mankind whom his hands have made. Marduk as Mu Azag, fifthly, his pure incantation, may their mouths proclaim, who through his pure incantation hath destroyed all the evil ones. Marduk, who knoweth the heart of the gods, who seeth through the innermost part, the evil doer he hath not caused to go forth with him, the founder of the assembly of the gods, who, Lacuna, their heart, subduer of the disobedient, Lacuna, director of righteousness, Lacuna, who rebellion and Lacuna, Marduk Azizi, -zi, the Lacuna, who put an end to anger, who Lacuna, Marduk as Sir Kur, thirdly, the destroyer of the foe, who puts their plans into confusion, who destroyed all the wicked, Lacuna, and led them, Lacuna. There is a gap here of sixty lines, but somewhere among the lost lines belong the following fragments, who Lacuna. He named the four quarters of the world, mankind he created, and upon him understanding Lacuna, the mighty one, Lacuna, Agil, Lacuna, the creator of the earth, Lacuna, Zulu Mumu, Lacuna, the giver of counsel and whatsoever, Lacuna, Mumu, the creator of Lacuna, Melil, the heavens, who for Lacuna, Gizkol, let Lacuna, who brought the gods to naught, Lacuna, the chief of all the lords, Lacuna, supreme is his might, Lugal Durama, the king of the band of the gods, the lord of rulers, who is exalted in royal habitation, who among the gods is gloriously supreme, Adu Nuna, the counsel of Ea, who created the gods his fathers, unto the path whose majesty no god can ever attain, Lacuna, in dull Azag made it be known, Lacuna, pure as his dwelling, Lacuna, of those without understanding is Lugal dull Azaga, Lacuna, supreme is his might, Lacuna, there in the midst of Tiamat, Lacuna, of the battle. Here follows the better preserved ending, the star which shineth in the heavens, may he hold the beginning and the future, may they pay homage to him, saying, he who forced his way through the midst of Tiamat without resting, let his name be Nibiru, the Caesar of the midst. For the stars of heaven he upheld the paths, he shepherded all the gods like sheep, he conquered Tiamat, he troubled and ended her life. In the future of mankind, when the days grow old, may this be heard without ceasing, may it hold sway for ever. Since he created the realm of heaven and fashioned the firm earth, the Lord of the world, the Father Bell, hath called his name. This title, which all the spirits of heaven proclaimed, did Ea hear, and his spirit has rejoiced. And he said, He whose name his fathers have made glorious, shall be even as I, his name shall be Ea. The binding of all my decrees shall he control, all my commands shall he make known. By the name of fifty, did the great gods proclaim his fifty names, they made his path preeminent. Epilogue Let the names of Marduk be held in remembrances, and let the first man proclaim them. Let the wise and the understanding 
consider them together. Let the father repeat them and teach them to his son. Let them be in the ears of the pastor and of the shepherd. Let the man rejoice in Marduk, the lord of the gods, that he may cause his land to be fruitful, that he himself may have prosperity. His word standeth fast, his command unaltered. The utterance of his mouth hath no god ever annulled. He gazed in his anger, he turned not his neck. When he is wroth, no god can withstand his indignation. Wide is his heart, broad is his compassion. The sinner and the evildoer in his presence, they received instruction, they spake before him, Lacuna, unto Lacuna. Of Marduk may the gods Lacuna, may they his name Lacuna. They took and. End of the creation epic. There is a second version of the fight with Tiamat. Note. Strictly speaking, the text is not a creation legend, although it gives a variant form of the principal incident in the history of the creation according to the Enumera Lish. Here, the fight with the dragon did not precede the creation of the world, but took place after men had been created and cities had been built. The city sighed, men, lacuna. Men uttered lamentation, they, lacuna. For their lamentation, there was none to help. For their grief, there was none to take them by the hand. Who was the dragon? Tiamat was the dragon. Bell in heaven hath formed Lacuna. Fifty caspu in his length, one caspu in his height. Six cubits is his mouth, twelve cubits is his Lacuna. Twelve cubits is the circuit of his ears, Lacuna. For the space of sixty cubits, Lacuna, he a bird. In water nine cubits deep he draggeth Lacuna. He raised his tail on high, Lacuna. All the gods of heaven, Lacuna. In the heaven the gods bowed themselves down before the moon god, Lacuna. The border of the moon god's robe they hastily grasped. Who will go and slay the dragon? And deliver the broad land from Lacuna. And become king over Lacuna. Go, Tishu, slay the dragon. And deliver the broad land from Lacuna. And become king over Lacuna. Thou hast sent me, O Lord, the raging creatures of the river, but I know not, Lacuna, of the dragon. The rest of the obverse and upper parts of the reverse of the tablet are wanting. The reverse. And opened his mouth and spake unto the god, Stir up cloud and storm and tempest. The seal of thy life shalt thou set before thy face. Thou shalt grasp it, and thou shalt slay the dragon. He stirred up cloud, and storm, and tempest. He set the seal of his life before his face. He grasped it, and slew the dragon. For three years and three months, one day and one night, the blood of the dragon flowed.